I'm Tommy Stinson, and you're watching What's in My Bag. Do you think we can take it before we shake it? Say how long? Do you think we can fake it before we break it? You can just lie, 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 lie. And love can Today's What's in My Bag is this record here, Pet Sounds. What makes this record incredible is not just this record, but the actual version of the record, that's just the vocals only. It's an incredible listen. If you've ever heard these songs or heard this record at all, you'll know the, the background vocals and all stuff are really gorgeous. But just to hear just the vocal takes alone is a whole nother revelation about the Beach Boys, and it's a fantastic pick. My second pick here, James Luther Dickinson. Can't speak enough about this guy. He went on to do many great things. One of them was a replacement record. One of them was a perfect record of mine. What's funny about it, our, our tour manager friend Aaron over here was looking at the back, and he's looking at all these names, and he goes, who's Sid? Because our guitar player, Steve Selvage, I go, that's Steve's dad. And he didn't know that. He thought, who's Sid Selvage? That's Steve's dad. This lady, Lana Del Rey, I saw her play at um, Austin City Limits a few years back. And I'm, I, I really wasn't crazy familiar with any of her stuff, but I liked some of the stuff I'd heard. And she came out and played. I remember being just mesmerized. My fourth pick. Blue Bell Noel by the Cocteau Twins. So when this record came out, it was like, it was a super soothing, beautiful kind of, you know, background music to me. I mean, I listened to it, you know, in earnest when it first came out and, and liked it a whole lot, but really it became background music for when I had my first, my first kid. Uh, when Ruby had been born, this was, this was played all the time. She recognized the record from when she was in the womb, in fact. <laughs> Funny story, the babies, the babies. Um, they had a few songs back in the 70s that were, you know, kind of minor hits and all that in the States. But the cool thing is, is I met John Waite once um, at a crazy, sh it was this bizarre kind of show. They only did one of them in New York. It was called the Rock and Roll Award Show, whatever. Then it was like us and Keith Richards, Tin Machine played, Tina Turner. And he was there, and I got to chat with him. One thing I never realized about John Waite was that he's really fucking tall. <laughs> and, um, and a sweetheart of a guy. Blonde on Blonde, my go-to record when I'm, when I'm thinking of, when I'm trying to get lyrical things happen in my head. I'll put this baby on, I'll just kinda, just kinda let it seep in. And what, what it does to me, for me actually, is it helps you, know, you kinda rem remind you of all the different things that he was able to put in a lyric to describe a moment, a sound, a day, a place, and one of my favorite Bob, Bob Dylan song is Sad I Lady of the Lowlands. It's just a gorgeous song, and I um, always loved that in all of its 11 minutes. Should I leave them by your gate? Oh, sad lady, should I wait? Gang of Four, this record here, um, there was a 12-inch that came out that had the song I've here called I Love a Man in a Uniform. It was a 12-inch dance mix that had also To Hell with Poverty on it. 
when they played Minneapolis when I was that big, I was 17, I couldn't get into the show because I was too young. So in order to get into the show, I had to move PA gear. Cut to, um, we're loading in, and I'm trying to pull down like a massive base cabinet. And I'm by myself in my little chucks, and I'm going down the ramp of a semi all by myself, and the thing consumed me, and I start to slip, and I'm about to go fully back, and someone grabs me just as I'm falling, grabs the thing, much bigger guy, obviously, but that was one of my favorite shows. It was, they, they came out, and they did both those songs, and I'm just sitting there just going, oh my God, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I had to regain my self-respect, so I Right there, the jam, setting sounds. Growing up, listening to punk rock and stuff, this was one of my, my, mine and my best friend, David Roth's favorite bands. This has this great song called Thick as Thieves on it that kind of always reminded me of him. Um, because we were thick as thieves as kids, but this was sort of our, you know, kind of our favorite growing up punk rock record. And uh, Paul Weller, I mean, can't say enough about this guy. He's a fantastic songwriter, fantastic singer. Chelsea Girls, uh, Chelsea Girl, I should say. Some of the best songs by some of the writers on this record, that's their best bit. Jackson Brown, I'm not a huge fan of. I think he wrote Ferris of the Season, and Somewhere There's a Feather, I think. Great songs. This is like quintessential alt-rock beginnings, as far as I'm concerned. Everyone that I know that's a songwriter of any note lives by this record. I stop my rambling. I don't do too much gambling these days. These days. Thanks for shopping with us. Today. Yeah. What's in my bag could be what's in your bag. You can't stay in the wrong.